Growing up in the 90s, there was literally nothing better than putting on Nickelodeon and watching cartoons. From Rugrats to Hey Arnold to Arthur, some of the greatest shows were from my childhood. However, there are some truly evil people out there that want to ruin your favourite shows with dark, dark theories about some of our beloved characters. So today on Top 10 Beyond the Screen, we're going to be counting down our list of the top 10 Nickelodeon scary theories that might ruin your childhood. Let's jump in. Coming in at 10, Arnold's parents. In Hey Arnold, it's explained that Arnold lives with his grandparents, Gertrude and Phil, because his parents went to Africa and never returned. Very sad. However, some people out there don't believe this to be the case and have instead concocted a theory that Arnold may actually be the child of Gertrude and Phil. So, if this is real, then why wouldn't they just tell him? Well, according to this theorist, they believe it would make the situation a lot worse. And considering they had Arnold at a much older age, they were more susceptible to birth defects, a point which actually adds fuel to another theory, that Arnold suffers from a condition called hydrocephalus, which is why his head is shaped like a football. According to this theory, all of his friends also have strangely shaped heads because Arnold is imagining a world where other people look like him. Very sweet. Coming in at 9, Bikini Bottom. Bikini Bottom is the location all of our favourite Spongebob characters live in in the popular Nickelodeon show Spongebob Squarepants. However, did you know that there is a real life place called Bikini Atoll in the Pacific Ocean? A place where the government did a lot of nuclear testing in the 40s and 50s, which has sparked a very interesting theory created by Reddit user Catmaster, who believes that Bikini Bottom is actually Atoll. I mean, after all, the creatures of Bikini Bottom are pretty damn weird. There are talking sponges. Clarinet playing squids, evil plankton, and so so much more. It's also canon that SpongeBob and his pals live in the same world as we do. Therefore, it makes sense that these talking creatures are the result of some weird nuclear waste reaction. Coming in at eight, Stoop Kid. Another Hey Arnold theory at this number. Remember Stoop Kid? He was one of the many memorable characters from the show who was best known for never leaving his stoop because he was too afraid, which resulted in the rest of the neighborhood taunting him for it. The entire thing is a mystery and has never been explained to us. However. The one user has a very interesting theory as to why this is. The theory goes that Stoop Kid was abandoned as a child and the Stoop serves as a parental figure for him. However, other theories go even deeper, stating that Stoop Kid may actually be a lookout for a drug operation inside the house, which is why he's too scared to leave. Coming in at seven, Angelica is delusional. Now, Rugrats is perhaps the most innocent show on our list, yet it seems to be the one with the darkest theories surrounding it. In this Reddit theory, Angelica is a paranoid schizophrenic. Schizophrenic, and the other babies are simply figments of her imagination that are used as a coping mechanism for the young girl. Yep. This theory is dark and slightly heartbreaking. It goes into more detail, stating that Tommy was stillborn, and to cope with the trauma, his dad became a toy maker. Chucky apparently died in childbirth along with his mum, which explains why Chaz is so on edge. The twins are the imagination of an aborted baby whose gender was unknown, so that's why there is one boy and one girl. Dill is actually the only baby that is real, but according to the theory, his life isn't that great because Angelica accidentally hit him really hard on the head as a child. Which is the explanation for why he is a little odd in the follow up series or grown up. That's dark as f. Coming in at six, Amanda Bynes was taken over by Penelope. Okay, now warning, this is perhaps the weirdest theory we have on our list, mostly because it goes in between the fictional world of the Amanda show and the life of the real life Amanda Bynes. Incredibly controversial, I know. One Reddit user ChicklePip claims that the cause of Amanda Bynes' mental breakdown in 2010 was the result of Penelope murdering her and taking over her place in the world. Now, for those who don't remember, Penelope was a character played by Bynes in her hilarious sketch comedy show, The Amanda Show. Penelope was a super fan of Amanda who would follow her around and do anything to try to get close to her in order to clone her. Now, the theory goes on to say that one day Penelope got close enough to Amanda killed her and began to live her life as Amanda Bynes. Just a very, very strange version of Amanda Bynes. Now, I'm not mentioning this theory to discredit mental illness by any means, but it's certainly a creative spin on reality. 
that's all I'm saying. Coming in at 5, Hey Arnold is actually about Helga. I mean, this is the show I want, honestly, and I think you all want it too. I grew up with Hey Arnold, and it was obvious, well it seemed obvious to me, that he was the main character of the show. I mean, his name is in the title after all. But is it really about him? Reddit user I Smoke the X's doesn't believe so. They instead came up with the idea that the show is actually about Helga, okay, the person who says Hey Arnold at the very beginning of the show. She's also the one who goes through monologues and the coming of age struggles, as well as the one they stop the entire plot for just to interject her gushing over her crush for Arnold. Quite honestly, it does make sense. She has a lot more problems to deal with than Arnold. I mean, her mother is a raging alcoholic who doesn't give her the time of day, but it would make sense why the show would focus on Arnold instead. It's just easier for kids to see the world through the eyes of a happy child, right? But are any of us happy? No. Coming in at 4, Cosmo and Wanda are antidepressants. Fairly Odd Parents was an adorable show about a young boy, Timmy, and his magical fairies who help him fulfill his wishes. It's a sweet show, but what if I told you the fairies were actually just imaginary and were instead the result of drugs? Yep. It's always drugs. One Reddit user, Super Inuit, believes that Cosmo and Wanda are actually metaphors for the antidepressants Zoloft and Prozac. Their evidence? Well, Cosmo and Wanda came into Timmy's life the moment Vicky enters it, which says that Timmy's mental health was on the decline when Vicky started babysitting him. The rules of the fairies are that they will always be with him for as long as Timmy needs them. And after seeing Timmy still need their help 10 years in the future, it could be plausible that these two fairies are indeed metaphors. In at 3, Crazy Steve. Now this theory is just straight up crazy and a little terrifying. At this point it's safe to say that if Dan Schneider is making a show on Nickelodeon, you can bet that Jerry Trainer is going to be in it. He played Crazy Steve and Drake and Josh, Spencer and iCarly, and Vinny and Wendell and Vinny. Now one theory from Fuzzy the Punk Cat and DeviantArt ties all three shows and all three characters played by Trainer into one universe. The theory goes, Crazy Steve had a sister named Carly who died. He went crazy and moved to California and worked at the movie theatre, the one in Drake and Josh, where he realised that Megan looked a lot like his sister Carly. So he killed her brothers and took her back to Seattle. Once in Seattle, he took the name Spencer in order to hide from the police, and Megan slash Carly played along, pretending to be Carly. She tried to do a web show to reach out to her parents, but of course it didn't work. Megan was then saved by Steve's dad, who then killed Freddy, resulting in Sam moving to California and living with Kat. Steve once again moved and changed his name to Vinny. Look, I can't keep up, but if you've seen all of these shows, this might ring some truth, but let me know in the comments below. Coming in at 2, the Thornbreeds were all on drugs. It's safe to say that the Wild Thornbreeds was an interesting show, one might call it an experience. You essentially had a little girl who talked to animals, an emo sister, and a child who was a part of the wild, in a sense. And then of course the parents, including Nigel Thornbury, a man with a very, very large nose that slightly resembles something attached to a body. You know what I'm talking about. The entire show was meme worthy, however there is one theory that could potentially explain why this show was so wacky. The theory goes that the entire family is on drugs. Yeah, that's right, drugs. Eliza spell was cast by a witch that lets her talk to animals, but in reality, she's just on acid. Nigel's energy is thanks to crack and Debbie, while Debbie is obviously on coke. Yep, enjoy revisiting this classic show, folks. And finally coming in at number one, Spongebob is dead. If you've watched Spongebob, in the last few years, you might have noticed that the show is a little different than it was in early years. Not only does SpongeBob look different, he's also no longer funny and seems more childish than before. Now many people think this is because Spongebob is a completely different character now. So when did this shift occur? Towards the end of Spongebob Squarepants the movie, Spongebob and Patrick are dried out and seemingly killed before their tears bring them back to life. However, folks don't think that's what went down. In the ocean, when a piece of sea sponge breaks off, it regenerates a new body around that piece. Therefore Spongebob and Patrick both died and regenerated into an entirely new Spongebob and Patrick, which explains the evident shift from season 5 onwards. Could also be because the writing is terrible. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list? Were there any Nickelodeon theories that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below and perhaps we can do a part 2. If you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss another Beyond the Screen vid. Until next time, see you later.